Hello guys and uh, welcome back to the channel. Down on the left hand side I hope you can see those two antennas. Might have to just uh, play it back but there's a omnidirectional on there and there's a um, little tiny directional, I think it was about 10 dB gain. Now I'm going to put this on because one of the reasons why I love flying like an aircraft like this, this is the Bixa 3 by the way, is because it can be scary, exhilarating, fun. There's a lot of emotions that can come with flying an airplane. I know it may not seem like that could possibly be true, but there is, because you find yourself sometimes in a situation where, uh, where you go to ask yourself, what do I do now? And you might have to ask yourself that a couple of few times, but... So what I'm doing here is I'm flying off from an area that I know quite well. I mean, at, at this time, this is before the, um, the rules were changed and laws are going to be enforced and all this sort of stuff. But I keep it below uh, 120 meters because that's safety. Uh, we do go beyond visual line of sight slightly. But this is the way you can test things. This is the way you can test um, your setup. You get an idea of how well you've done or how well you haven't done. Um, and on the craft at the moment, like I say, it's the Bixler 3. I've got, well, it's going to be a run cam up there. I, I think I'm pretty positive it's a run cam eagle. Not the run cam eagle 2, just the run cam eagle. My favourite out of the two, to be honest with you. Um, but maybe if I'd have spent more time with the one coming too, I may have been able to set it up a bit nicer, a harder light. But this is what we've got. And on the wing here, um, the 4K, uh, no, sorry, uh, 1080p camera is the Runcam 2. Alright. I'm not a great Runcam fanboy, but most of my cameras are Runcams apart from the CADX ones. But I don't think that should mean anything. So. Here we are flying over, let's have a look what we got at the top then. We got a, we're in cruise, CRS, um, and on the, that's at the very top, and then you can see the battery voltage, 16.2 volts. Uh, we got how much next to that, to the right is the current that we're drawing at the minute, 8.8 .8 amps. And then we've got the amount, the efficiency of the current that I'm gonna need per kilometre, which is 100, 23 milliamps. Well, let's see how that's going to work out. We'll have to come back to that because it's been a long time since I've seen it. I've got a little tiny screen in front of me. I'll probably try and make that a bit rational. Uh, next to that, we've got how many um, how many milliamps we're using. So it's going up 505, 6, 7, 8, 9, being able to see it. On the right hand side, we've got our flight time. So we're 3 minutes 40 in. Um, just below that we've got the distance away, so we're 3.16 kilometres. Below that we've got the throttle, which is at 54%. Moving left, we've got the altitude, which is 100 metres, 101 metres, 102, 3, 4, 5, 6, yeah, metres. And to the left of that we've got our speed, which is in kilometres, so we're doing 63 kilometres an hour. And to the left of that, we have our satellite count, which is 16, and below that, we've got our, um, our radio, the transmitter um, signal strength, which is at 99%. So, one of the things I'm hoping that you can see from the image here is, apart from it getting a snowy, um, that there's no bad lines in it, there's nothing, there's, there's no type of interference, I'm hoping that you can notice and for me that's I give myself a sort of bit of a pat on the back for that because that means that yeah, this isn't set up too bad at all but and um, as we come into like a little area like this as you can see we're four and a nearly four and a half kilometers away and we're heading out directly away from ourselves as you can see that little triangle in the middle of the screen is pointing back to where I am um, at uh, 120 metres, it's early in the morning, you can still see there's quite a bit of sort of cloud and mist, which doesn't help the viewing too easy when you imagine that I'm just looking through the FPV camera, 
I don't have, um, you know, I, I can't see the 4K, uh, sorry, 1080p, uh, the HD, I should just call it, shouldn't I? The HD uh, image, the way that you can see it on the screen there. Now, I think at this sort of area, this is a place called Hatton. I'm going over, and um, very shortly we're going to come up to Hatton Locks on the HD. I think you can just see them uh, coming up. But as we go over here, of course, look, we start losing our signal because there's a lot of um, there's going to be a lot of uh, Wi-Fi signals on the go down there, and so it gives us a little bit of a black spot. Now the thing is here, what do we do? Do we hit the return to home? Or do we think we can push through it? Now, to be honest with you, this is part of the fun. It's like, can I push through it? Now, you've set up your craft. You know that you've been out, you've done your mechanical checks, and this is before you've gone for a flight controller. So you know that it's going to fly near enough level for you. And you've then added the flight controller. You've made the adjustments and with the FPV. You've made all the adjustments that you need to to make sure this thing is still flying well in manual mode. You've got telemetry on your radio in your hand. You can see that you're holding your course. You can see that you're, uh, you're holding your altitude and you're holding your speed. So this is where you can be flying with nothing, no, no visual, but you've got that telemetry that comes back. And the telemetry gives you enough visual, numbered visual, for you to know that your, your signal's still good. Yeah, from your radio, you can see that you've got satellites still. You, you know that if you do hit that return to home because you set your craft up, you're good. And so you push through. And this is what can happen. You may find yourself gaining a little bit of altitude without knowing. Um, you know, just pushing, pulling back on that pitch just to just gain a couple of meters maybe. But this is all part of the fun of it for me. This is where, you know, it's... Uh, there's, I think... No, that's not. I don't even know what that is down there on the left-hand side. But it's not hat and locks. I don't think. So here we are. You know, we're pushing through the signal. We're, um, I don't expect a great, a great picture back because this is. I was just trying to push myself out to eight kilometres on this run. Um, I'd done five, I'd done six, and now I wanted to go for eight, and the one I do after this is uh, ten. But it's all a case of can you push through the signal or can you not push through the signal? So it goes to show that even though you're in a complete blackout, you get used to looking at your, your visual like this. And now this time I've, I can see, I've already seen that I've got to my eight kilometers. And here we go. I flick the switch, return to launch or return to home. Um, I don't think I chickened out. I think what I did was just uh, I pushed through the first bit, I wrecked my nerves, or just pushed my nerves quite a bit on the first bit. And so now I've decided to let the plane just bring itself back. Or at least until I get a good enough visual signal again that I can take over and bring it back in myself. I can't remember what type of day this was. It was probably going to be um, not a bad windy day. But as you can see, there's a bit of movement on the craft. It could be me, but as I'm letting the plane fly itself now, it's just correcting itself. So there's a little bit of uh, wind out there. So the thing is, with this video then, it's not about um, anything to do with the scenery or anything like that. This is just how far would you go? This is the, uh, the freight flight. And, you know, can you, can you or would you push yourself through it I don't know let me know in the comments below what would you have done that would you have uh, on the first time that you started losing signal would you have decided no that's it for me um, I don't really want to I don't really want to do this or is it sometimes when you just tell yourself no I know this area or I know the plane I know that as long as I can see my telemetry as long as I can see my altitude um, I can I can push it and I can just see what happens for me, I decided because I could see the telemetry, I would push it. If you see now in the left-hand side, you can see our, our um, still the signal from the transmitter to the uh, craft is still uh, excellent. 
still excellent so that's it now there's the instructions there move the sticks if I want to change we're going to just keep coming in like this as you can see the video is out of sync now uh, which really annoys me and the reason why it goes out of sync is because in all the areas where there's no signal um, and the video feed isn't coming through correctly it's not keeping the timing correctly and so it is that is going to happen uh, I think the big building let me have a look how far away we are no we're 6.6 .6 kilometers away I was thinking that white building down there on the HD image was where we we're going to come back into land but it's not uh, we've still got uh, six and a half kilometers to go so you can watch the end of the video if if you like I'm probably going to cut this off about here because this pretty much goes to plan now just bringing it in um, but I didn't it's not to show you the entire video and I am actually going to just shorten it all off to here because it's not to go over the entire video. Are the locks down there? See a little peek up there. See if we can see Hatton locks. Oh, that's, I believe that's the Birmingham Road. And this is Hatton once again in front of us. So again, we may go out of the signal. Uh, down in Hatton, actually, there used to be one of the old asylums. Um, and weirdly enough, they decided to change it from being an asylum and make it into housing. I would have hated that myself. If you can hear that beep beep in the background, that's my dinner calling me. So I'm going to get off talking on this, or I should rephrase that. I'm going to stop talking and I will see you in the next one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. So many roads to choose. We start out walking and walking.